Well, what was going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, host Yeah, and I hope you lot are all doing well. Welcome to your match review of Chelsea's 4 0 demolition of Everton at home in the Premier League at Stamford Bridge. Frank Lampard's Blues, Young Blues, seemingly B team Blues, absolutely dismantled Carlo Ancelotti's Everton. Now, as a Chelsea fan, I do not like to see Carlo Ancelotti on the end of a result like that, but in terms of the positivity of Chelsea's play and the performances, man, it's going to be difficult to go through the performances of this game. Huge, huge positives. Wonderful scenes at Stamford Bridge indeed. Before I get into the match review, I want to request that you guys subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet already done so, please do sub, hit that bell notifications icon as it is important. Help me out by liking this video and why not follow me on the socials? All right, let's get into it. Huge game for Chelsea going into this match. Both Tottenham and Wolves had dropped points the day before. I don't know what that was difficult to say. So they had the opportunity here to take advantage and boy did they take advantage. Frank Lampard is still hamstrung with injuries with absentees such as Kovacic, Tammy Abraham, um, uh, Kante, Jorginho was suspended, Pulisic injured still, hudson Adoy's is injured still. You dig? These are all like first teamers. Oh yeah, Ruben Loftus-Cheek's not match fit yet. A lot of problems here. So he was in a difficult spot in terms of lineup, but I'm going to part the who scored a match center on the screen for you now to have a look at the lineup and of course the match statistics as well. As you can see, Chelsea were imperiously dominant over Everton. They had 17 shots to three. They had over 60% possession, like over 10% better pass success. Loads more dribbles. Sure, um, Everton might have won more tackles and aerial, aerial duels getting stuck in more, but Chelsea will by far the more creative footballing side and so many more chances. So, Ancelotti went with his usual 4-4-2 that he's been playing with Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin up front. Frank Lampard went for a 4-3-3 with the midfield of Barkley, Gilmore and Mason Mount and the OAP bus Pass front free of Giroud, Pedro, and William. Substitute appearances came in the shape of Tino Andrin to come on for Pedro. Broja or Broja, I think it's pronounced, came on for Giroud, and James came on for an injured Mason Mount to play in the midfield. Goal scored from Mason Mount. A lovely goal, by the way. He had he was denied a supen stupendous, a super stupendous goal previously in the match. A good save from Pickford. He wasn't great in this match, but he. He scored his goal, he took the ball, lovely turn, tucked it in the corner, lovely. And all three of the OAP front three, man, I should be a rapper, scored. Superb, Pedro breaking the line, splitting the defenders, running on the shoulder, lovely finish, one on one. Uh, Giroud gets a nice goal, Willian gets a nice goal. All four goals were superb from Chelsea Football Club. But more than that, they could have scored five, six, seven. They carved out so many chances. Now, before I get into like player performances and talking about what this means, it's worth noting that generally in this game, Everton were quite poor. But it's really important to note, and this is what Frank Lampard has always wanted, it's really important to note that you have to start the game so strongly and impose yourself on the opposition so they don't feel like they're in the game. And that is exactly what happened in this game at Stamford Bridge. In the first 25 minutes, Chelsea turned into like prime Barcelona in terms of the chances they carved out. Not just the two goals they scored or whatever it was in that time, it's how they played. Sure, Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison, they wanted to play their exciting high press, they were in scintillating form under Ancelotti, but when Chelsea did such superb combinations and carved out so many chances early doors, it does crush the opposition psychologically. And, and Frank Lampard has always maintained throughout his managerial career, he certainly echoed this a few times as Chelsea manager, it is important to do this. Chelsea weren't doing this, they were having loads of chances previously in the season, but they weren't really beating down their opposition mentally, and they were allowing the opposition to believe they were still in the game. Chelsea did the right thing here, and they sort of beat Everton down into a pulp, essentially. Now, the midfield was fantastic, right? So, this was the ultimate, on paper, B-Tech midfield, and that's not to denigrate any of the players in there. Chelsea's elite midfield was supposed to be Jorginho, Mateo Kovacic, and N'Golo Kante, two incredibly highly, two, three incredibly highly rated midfielders, but it was a little bit makeshift in Billy Gilmore, this youth product, 
uh, Ross Barkley, a sort of rotational B team player, and Mason Mount, sure he's in the starting 11 a lot, but often he plays as number 10 or left wing, and he doesn't seem one of the starting, you know, foundational midfielders from midfield. But we'll get onto that in just a second, let's talk about player performances. Kepa was actually pretty poor for the first 60-70 minutes, flapped quite a lot, sure he didn't concede a goal, but he did sort of redeem himself a little bit later on in the game, maybe a few nerves coming back to Stamford Bridge as the starting keeper in the Premier League, but still, he would, he, I think it, his poor performance for a long time got lost in the midst of a generally excellent Chelsea performance. But, you know, hopefully he'll settle a bit more when he did get better throughout the latter stages of the game. Marcus Alonso was pretty good. He received the ball and did his thing really well. To be honest, we didn't put that much of the game through him in this instance, which was quite interesting. It was a lot more narrow, this sort of tactical plan, maybe. Usually, I suppose, as a wing-back, he receives the ball more and hangs out more in that sort of far wide left area occupying that space and a lot goes through him. That didn't happen today, but he was pretty good. On the other side, I think Azpilicueta was excellent, both defensively and offensively. He hasn't really let me down this season at all, apart from the very, very beginning of the season when everyone thought he was over the hill. He's fought his way back into form and he's been very good. Out of the two centre-backs, Rudiger, who has been really poor of late, was the better of the two. Both of them made, I think, um, an individual error relatively early, but Zuma made a few throughout the game, and uh, Rudiger was actually quite good, pretty darn good, actually, comparatively. So this just leaves me thinking, dude, who, who are the good Chelsea centre-backs? You know, it's, one week it's this one, one week it's that one. I just don't even know anymore. So that's that. So the midfield, like I said, was interesting. All the players were excellent. Mason Mount scored an excellent goal. He also had one denied by Pickford. That would have been an all, another superb goal. So that's great. Ross Barkley got two assists. In his last two games against the Merseyside clubs, you know, previous club, Everton, and bits of rival Liverpool, he's got like... I think he's got like three assists and a goal or something. He's been absolutely excellent, Ross Barkley. When he's not being too selfish, he's very, very functional indeed. But the truth is, it's all about Billy Gilmore. He completely changes the dynamic of this Chelsea football club team. Chelsea football club team, that sounds weird. Not only can he completely dominate and dictate play, he's very, very good defensively and he can go forward. He was denied an assist right at the end by Tino Andrin taking too long on the ball. Um, in terms, he was everywhere. He ran more than any other player. Billy Gilmore, for me, he's man of the match. Again, he was superb. Jorginho is going to struggle getting back into this team over Billy Gilmore. And that sounds like a joke, but it's true. Billy Gilmore's just absolutely bossed the champions of Europe, champions of the world, Club World Cup, and champions elect. Liverpool, he completely bossed it one man of the match. Wins his chance to play in the Premier League in a high-profile game. Does the exact same thing. In terms of his talent, player attributes, I can wax lyrical about this young Scott all day. Billy Gilmore did it for me today. Superb scenes. Shout out to the OAP front three for all getting their goal. Pedro was excellent again. I love how Pedro's just come alive in the part of the season where we needed him most to, to like have this run in for top four. Superb from uh, Pedro, great industry as per usual, good defensive work. He's good at sweeping back in his own defensive third when the ball is coming in um, off an opposition play. He's very good at that, very good on the break, and he's good at combinational play in the final third. So shout out to Pedro. Willian scored a very good goal, decent today as well. Probably not quite as good as Pedro in terms of all-round play, but <laughs> very good. Giroud, he disappoints me a lot of the time when he comes. He's very intelligent, Giroud, with his one-touches. That's why he was very good at combining with Hazard, because he knew he just a bouncing ball and knew exactly where to move his boot. But when the ball comes to his feet, he's so slow at sorting his feet out. I think it's because he's such a big geezer. He's so slow. He's got a good touch, but when he needs to like sort his feet out quickly, like someone like Pedro would just quickly roll the ball, flick it about, and he's gone. Giroud is literally the opposite of that. So the ball often gets robbed off him. That's frustrating, but he got his goal. He did do some good sort of bits in this game. So shout out, good performance from Giroud. Substitutes, Rich James looked very, very good in midfield when he came on for Mason Mount. He did his job well. Um, he looks very comfortable. I watched him a little bit for Wigan playing in midfield, but not much. So it was good to see him completely comfortable at Premier League level, occupying that midfield spot, uh, allowing Billy Gilmore to go forwards a little bit more. Superb scenes. Tino Andrin, <laughs> the commentator said when he comes on, you know, come on lad, just get a few safe touches and make sure there are a good few touches and settle into the game. Tries a 30-yard volley immediately. 
<laughs> incredibly, incredibly highly rated teenager Tino Andrin, and I think we'll be seeing more of him next season. Uh, yeah, good physique, technical. Let's wait for him to actually get a proper chance. Uh, Amanda Broja, I couldn't call him Broja, but I think it's Broja. Get down in the comments and correct me, and let me know the correct pronunciation. Got absolutely cleared out by Holgate. Didn't really get a chance to get into the game. Nice to see him on the pitch, getting minutes in the Premier League. Obviously very highly rated. I've spoken about him on the channel before. Chelsea are in an incredibly good position now in terms of the top four, but more importantly, the last two games and results really have demonstrated something great that Frank Lampard is doing with this young Chelsea side. I'm sure you'll agree. Superb performances. The old boys in Willian, Pedro and Giroud all coming into form when they need to to carry Chelsea over the finish line revelations such as Billy Gilmore offering new headlines and excitement for Chelsea and indeed just football fans in general a superb football match and pff, excited to watch Chelsea games again under Frank Lampard what do you guys think get down in the comment section below express your thoughts on this game how do you feel about it who performed well what do you think this Chelsea team is going to do in the future get down there and express yourself and if you've enjoyed the content please do like the video that means a lot um, yeah, follow me on the socials at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, you guys. Enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.